Hi, I'm Scott Noon. I'm the CEO of Audio Advice. If you've ever watched a blockbuster movie on a regular television, you probably noticed black bars above and below the movie. You may have wondered why the movie did not fill up your television screen. I'll explain why most movies are created this way and review the modern technologies that allow you to enjoy movies in their widescreen format. Then I'll help you decide if a widescreen home theater is the best option for your theater room. This video is part of our home theater design series of videos that covers virtually everything about designing a home theater. So if after watching this one, you want to learn more, check out the link in the description to all of our design series videos. First, I thought it would be interesting to go over how widescreen movies came into existence. By the mid-1950s, more than half of the homes in the U.S. had a television set, and the movie industry worried people would stay home instead of visiting their theaters. They needed to come up with a plan to get people back in the theaters, and it was at that time that widescreen movies and theaters took off. All right, so this was a brilliant move by the motion picture industry because humans actually see things naturally in widescreen. So try this little test. If you put one hand above your eyes and one hand below and you start to move them out, you'll find somewhere about right here, you can't see them anymore. If you take that same distance and put it sideways, you can easily see your hands and you can keep pushing them out and out and out until they get about here, which means your actual field of vision is truly in widescreen. The experience you get when watching a movie in widescreen where it fills most of your field of vision is quite immersive. For this reason, almost 85% of blockbuster movies today are filmed in widescreen with many television series and concerts starting to be produced in widescreen. For many people, seeing the latest movie on their 50-inch television with black bars at the top and bottom is nothing like experiencing the same movie in a commercial theater in all of its widescreen glory. This is why movie theaters will always have their place as a great escape for a wonderful entertainment experience where you can become totally immersed in the latest movie. If you are lucky enough to be considering a front projection home theater, widescreen may be a great choice. And if you do it right, you can replicate that incredible immersive and emotional experience you remember from going to the theaters as a kid. To fully understand what widescreen is, you need to know a little bit about aspect ratios. This is simply a ratio of the width of the screen divided by the height of the screen. You've likely seen all kinds of fractions and expressions to describe the various ratios of the content we watch. I'm going to go through a few sets of numbers now. If you want to go through these in more detail, go to the link in the description where we have our full detailed article on widescreen with all of the numbers and calculations. Up until the turn of the century, standard television was in a 4 by 3 ratio, as it was normally called, or 1.333, if you do the math. When HDTV was invented, a much wider format was introduced called 16 by 9, where the math comes to 1.78. However, most widescreen movies are shot in a ratio of 21.6 to 9. With this ratio being fairly hard to remember, the industry just calls it 2.4, which is equal to 21.6 divided by 9. The trick in looking at these is to look at the fraction. And the bigger the number, the wider the screen will be in relation to the height. With 85% of movies and more content going this way, serious home theater enthusiasts are moving more and more towards the widescreen experience in their theaters. Now, here's where there's great news. Previously, you need a special curved screen and an extra motorized lens on a sled in front of your projector to get into widescreen in your home theater. You could not even get started for less than $25,000. With the advent of motorized lens memory on projectors, the game changed. These days, many home theater projectors have motors to move the lens as opposed to the manual focus they used to have. You can control everything from the remote instead of standing by your projector and moving the lens. 
The projectors with motors have a way to program in different memory positions, which allows us to easily adjust the zoom to get a widescreen experience for movies. Projectors with this option start as low as around $2,000, which opens this concept up to lots of home theaters. The way this works is pretty neat. First, you obviously need a wide 2.4 projection screen. If you're in the process of picking out the best size screen, check out the free home theater design tool at audioadvice.com where you can design your entire room, including the screen size, to best fit your space and desired level of immersion. The tool will show you the ideal sizes for your room size and location of your seats. To get the best experience for both 16 by 9 news and sports and still enjoy full 2.4 widescreen for your movies, you first set up your projector to perfectly fill your screen from top to bottom with a 16 by 9 image. You then save that lens position as your 16 by 9 in your projector for using with regular sports, news, and other television content. Then, when you project a 2.4 movie on your screen, you observe that it does not fill the screen. You will then use your projector remote to zoom out the picture until you completely fill your 2.4 screen with your 2.4 movie. Next, save that position as your 2.4 position in the projector for widescreen movies. You can now choose which position you want depending on the type of content you're watching. Once you have these positions set up, you can simply recall them with the remote for your projector or program them into a control system for quicker access. For a pro tip, note that there's also some content produced at other widescreen ratios, so you can technically set up a memory position for any ratio. So Audio Advice typically sets up 16 by 9, 2.4, and sometimes what is referred to as Netflix widescreen. When purchasing a projector, you'll need to calculate the position in the room to install your front projector where it is able to fill the screen for 16 by 9 and 2.4. This is called the throw distance. When you purchase your projector from Audio Advice, we will do this calculation for you. And if you're installing it yourself, we will also provide our exclusive tips and tricks setup guide for your projector so you can get the best settings and picture possible. Now that you understand the concept of widescreen, I'm going to help you decide if it is the right choice for you. If you plan to mostly enjoy movies in your home theater, I highly recommend a 2.4 widescreen system. The screen itself is not much more expensive than a 16x9 model, and you will simply use the memory button to toggle between 16x9 and 2.4 widescreen when needed. There are a couple of use cases where we recommend a 16x9 front projection system. The first would be if you primarily watch sports and other 16x9 content, and thus want the image to be as large as possible for 16x9. You may not have the space to widen the screen more or the budget to get a projector that will be able to provide enough light output for 2.4 content. Our experts at audiovice.com or in our stores can work with you to help you determine if this is the case for you. The other case for a 16 by 9 screen is when the space for your screen is more limited in width than height. So I'm going to use the home theater design tool at audiovice.com to just show you an example. So let's say you are setting up your own room and you set your depth at 16 feet in the room, maybe 11 and a half feet wide, 9 foot high ceiling. You'll see with a 2.4 screen, you've got a 130 inch diagonal screen here that's 50 inches high and it's 10 feet wide. We've essentially used up all of the space from left to right in the front. So there's not much space on the right here or left there, but we can go up. So if I go down to the video section, you'll see one of the things you can do in the tool is toggle between a 16 by nine screen and a 2.4. So watch what happens when I click 16 by nine. Now I can take the diagonal from the 130 inch diagonal to 138 inch and end up exactly at the 120 inch or 10 foot wide screen that I had in the very beginning. And what this means is that I can watch 2.4 widescreen movies with all of the same surface area that I had before. But when I watch 16 by 9 movies, I pick up a much, much bigger screen. So you sort of get the best of both worlds. If you're the type of person who wants the very best from your home theater and have the budget, there's an additional option that can take things to the next level. It is an add-on lens from a company called Panamorph. How this process works is fairly misunderstood, and I'm going to unravel it for you now. Almost all projectors have a light engine that is 16 by 9 in ratio. When you put a 16 by 9 image through its light engine, all of the pixels are used. 
But when you display a 2.4 image using a 16 by 9 light engine, the pixels that are above and below the image are not used. These pixels are about 33 to 38% of the total pixel count, depending on the type of projector you have. To fill your new 2.4 screen using lens memory and zooming out, you are still not using those extra pixels, which reduces both clarity and light output. Now, I do have to say that most people do not even notice a difference, and about 90% of our home theaters do not have a panomorph. But if you are fanatical about getting the best video experience, a panomorph is worth considering. Panamorph has worked with the major projector manufacturers, so you can use their add-on lens with the projector to fully utilize the entire light engine when watching a 2.4 movie. This can be a big deal if your screen is on the large side, since it results in 33 to 38% more brightness and clarity. The way it works is a three-step process, but you never see the steps. It is instant. First, the projector memory is set to an image that fills the screen from left to right, but you still are not using all the pixels, as this is just like the zoom setting above. The projector then gets set to a mode that stretches the image. This uses all of the pixels in the projector's 16x9 light engine. When this image goes through a panomorph lens, the lens then compresses it back to its original shape, and you have used all the pixels in your projector for a 2.4 widescreen movie. If you're in the process of designing a theater, check out the link in the description to all the videos in our home theater design series, which cover everything from room design, speaker layout, screen selection, and everything else home theater related. You can also go to audiovice.com where you can use our free home theater design tool, see the full theater design series of videos, as well as home theater installation videos and inspiration gallery. At Audio Advice, over 50% of the home theaters we install are in widescreen format. Our home theater designers can work with you to go over the pros and cons for each type to get you the best outcome for your dream home theater room and budget. I hope this video has given you some insight into the great technology available now to bring the immersive experience of a commercial cinema into your home. If you want to learn more about home theaters and get the latest home theater content, like this video and subscribe. And if you want to get notified about new videos, also click the notify button. At Audio Advice, we've been designing and installing high-performance home theaters and smart home systems for our customers for decades. In fact, we've designed and delivered more custom theaters than anyone else in the Southeast. We are now offering home theater design no matter where you live in the United States. If you're interested in a custom home theater or upgrading your current system, call or chat with us at audioadvice.com or stop by one of our award-winning showrooms. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.